And in Sunday, London town, <laughs> the sun was shining. What can I say about this man? George Duke. So lovely to have you here. Oh, great to be here. Yeah. You're the man. You all know. You all know. You all know. You enjoying the weather? You enjoying London oh, town? It's, it's cool, man. The first time I've ever been here, it's been this warm. Yeah, I can understand. This is like LA. Yeah? It's crazy. Oh, man. Well, because usually uh, you have the, like, the bleak, wintry London weather. Yeah, well, it was cold last time I was there. Kind of cold. No, I still love London. It's the people that make the place. Yeah, yeah. No, no, we're pretty cool over there. So you say you didn't even recognize this place back here because normally it's so cold you don't even get to come out. <laughs> I never knew this was here. I uh, want to talk about certain shoes you did a long time ago. So I'm going to have to jog your memory a little bit. But, oh. Uh oh. I explained to you before that there was a, a London, well, kind of an English jazz mm. dance movement over here, which consisted of fusion and samba tracks. And what made you so special was the fact that there were certain tracks of yours and tracks you worked on with other people, Floor Prima Ito, uh, Stanley Clark, the list, right. Billy Cobham, the list is endless, that uh, kind of helped mould our scene. And, yeah. What I found quite amazing as well is the fact that you had no idea no, whatsoever nothing at all. That, that we were dancing to, to these tracks. No idea. No, no idea. N nothing. I mean, uh, the first time I heard about it was from you, I think. Uh-huh. Okay. You know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> Some months back. I, I just didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> I guess uh, when, when I look back at tracks, that sort of, uh, yeah, that were very really significant to our scene. I guess tunes like uh, yeah. My Soul was a very, very special one. Uh, tracks like Festival, wow. the stuff that you did on uh, the Brazilian Love Affair, and tracks you did with Billy Cobham, uh, yeah. Frankenstein Goes to the Disco, Sweet Wine, and... Jeez, <laughs> it's just odd to me, you know? Because yeah, yeah. none of that music was meant to be dance music. Yeah, yeah. It, it had nothing to do with it. It was not conceived to be yeah. dance music. It was just conceived to be music for people to listen to. That's why yeah. it's very odd. And it has, there's a level of sophistication in that music yeah. that is not normal for people dancing. Yeah. You know, yeah. unless you're, you're, now I've been to Brazil, uh -huh. where I've seen, like, you know, they're dancing to much more sophisticated music. But in the Western culture, uh -huh. it's yeah. very odd to find something yeah. that sophisticated being used. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. I mean, even Brazilian love affair. Yeah, it's fine, because you mentioned, uh, you mentioned when you went to Brazil, because I must say, when I look at our jazz scene, even though it was referred to as, uh, even though it was referred to as jazz, I guess the music that was closest to what we were dancing to was kind of samba, samba influence yeah, music. Right, so if you're right. mentioning the, the Brazilian connection, I and mean, if you look at the kind of steps that we did, it yeah. was closer to samba than yeah. say uh, straight traditional jazz. And uh, I, I must, I have to say wow. this because when I play festival. Uh, still, I have such a laugh about it because when you play, it's got, got that, it's really sweet. It's fast. Kind of, yeah, because because what happens what what happens is when I play the uh, the, the first part, where you they yeah. you start, you know, you go the nice yeah, little guitar. Right, right. You know, people can get comfortable with that. You know, they kind of like, yeah, you know, this, this is really nice. You yeah. know, but when the break comes yeah. in and she. <laughs> Then, yeah, <laughs> I said, you can, you just watch, you can just count the amount of people that just drop out. Then yeah. you get a couple of bounces, like, <laughs> try, trying to keep up with this, you know, and it's like, and then when the break finishes and it comes back in again, people right. are like, is it safe now? And they come back on the floor, and then, you know, they, they start, but, but I, 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 to this day, I, people still cannot deal with that break, you know? But, well, that's what I said. It was not designed yeah. to really be a dance thing, you know. But, you know, that, that, that's what makes it so special. The yeah, fact that odd. we adopted that music and the dance was created, you know. Um, but um, also, when uh, I look at the stuff that you were doing at, uh, with, with Flora Perrin, for example, one of the biggest tracks over here was uh, her Moon Dreams. Mm -hmm. And what was so special about that period was the fact that you guys were taking Brazilian classics, that's like an Egberto Gismonte right. composition, a Casaforte, a Lobo, and my all-time composition, so I have to say this again, Real Cruz by Milton uh, Asimento, which you arranged on Florence album. And, uh, but how did you get into kind of that kind of synthesized solo? How did you start kind of experimenting with that? Well, you know, I, when I was with um, uh, 
Zappa, Frank Zappa, I started experimenting with synthesizers, and I carry that into to my work with Cannonball and Adderley. And Cannonball kind of introduced me to Florin Ayerto. And, and so he began uh, using Brazilian music with his, and I began, they be, we became friends, and then I started using it with mine, and we started playing on each other's records. And Flora always liked the idea of a synthesizer. I can't, it was really, I think, more Flora than anybody else. Flora would just ask me, she, she says, I hear a synthesizer. <laughs> George, you play? You know, so we did, but the music was very free. I mean, it was like a, um, um, a kind of group of musicians that kind of were just experimenting. Mm -hmm. And so if I heard something, I said, Flora, check this out. And, and we would play something just to make it a little different than the normal uh -huh. stuff yeah. that was going on at the time, the yeah. more traditional Brazilian stuff. Mm -hmm. The synthesizer gave it another effect, yeah, especially the way I played it because I wanted to play the blues. So by that, you know, for me playing blues type licks on top of the Brazilian stuff, it made it feel a little different. Right, right, you know? right. Yeah. And Flora liked that. So that, that's, I don't know, it was, it was a great time, man. It was a great time. Yeah, because I mean, what, what made it so special as well, I mean, yeah, you guys are just creating something completely uh, new, really. I mean, obviously different inspirations from whatever, but still, I mean, that was just so fresh. But how did you, I mean, I, I'm more interested in knowing how you guys <laughs> started dancing to that stuff. It just, uh, does, I don't want, I don't, I'll, I'll tell, I, yeah, <laughs> I don't get it. I'll tell, I'll tell you what happened, George. I, I mean, yeah, you, you had the kind of the, the disco, sort of boogie soul yeah. scene in, in the 70s. Boogie, right? boogie, boogie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, the normal but, stuff. Um, but yeah, that's what we were dancing to. Right. And basically, even within a lot of those disco chats, you have that kind of sort of you know, little Latin kind of sort of vibe right. as well. But then what happened was, uh, people from the disco, the boogie kind of stuff, they started playing more sort of funky fusion jazz right. funk. So then the dancing started to change uh, to kind of interpret what we were hearing. And then the DJs kind of started getting more experimental. We started touching on like the stuff that Chick Corea was playing or like Jeff Law, but that kind of sound of fusion stuff. And as the dancing, uh, as we learned to dance interpret that, then DJs started getting more, getting deep and deeper, deep, started right, going right, into right. the vaults of That's your wild. kind of music. So then the dancing change just started getting faster and faster. The DJs were looking for heavier <laughs> tracks and that's how, that's basically that's how we got into it. And it's, it's very cool, man. It's just, it's just uh, like, like you said earlier, I don't think any of us were aware of it. None of us. Yeah, yeah. Because if we were, we would have made an effort to be a part of it and do something, maybe, maybe even you gear some music towards that movement, but we didn't know.